In this video, I'll be introducing the idea of a basis in topology. Okay, so let's look at R2, right? If I have a subset of R2, say U, we say U is open if for every point in U, there exists an open ball around that point that's con completely contained inside of U, okay? So I can do that for this point right here, right? In this case, so let's write this out. For every x and element of U, there exists B, an open ball. So I'll say B, an element of B, where B is the set of open balls, right? So B is an element is an element of B, okay, such that X is an element of that element B, a subset of U. Okay. So that's the requirement that B is open, right? So now, how may we extend this so that this is guaranteed to be a topology? Well, we need it to be closed under arbitrary unions, but that's pretty obvious for anything, right? Because if I have this requirement for anything, that requirement for anything, I can just use that for the union because the union contains U. Okay, but for finite intersections, what we need is to have for every B1, B2, an element of our basis, right? For every one of those, and for every x an element of their intersection, there exists another one, E3, an element of the basis, such that x is an element of B3, is a subset of their intersection. Okay, what is this thing? Well, it says that if I have two open sets, and I look at a point in their intersection, say that one right there, and I create two basis points around it, right, say those two, Right, and I look at their intersection, right, that intersection right there, there should be another one contained inside of that. Okay, it's very tiny, this picture, so I'm going to rework it. <laughs> so... Right, so we're going to have... Two basis elements, right? So I've, I'm gonna make it bold. So I'm gonna have this basis element. I'm also gonna have this basis element. They don't contain their edges intuitively, right? And what it's saying is that inside of both of these basis elements, I should find another basis element right there. And so that requires that this one is inside of both of these, and the intersection of both of those is going to be contained inside of the intersection. Okay, I'll make this more concrete uh, later. So we just make a definition. Definition. Using this intuition and the fact that it needed to be a topology, we say B a subset of the power set of a set, right? It's a collection of subsets, is a basis if one. Um, for every x, an element of x, um, there exists x, there exists a b, an element of b, such that x is an element of b, of course, is a subset of x. 
basically x is open. Okay, we need x to be open, so we have this requirement. And secondly, is that um, for every b1, b2, an element of b, right? Um, and x for every x an element of their intersection there exists a b3 an element of the basis right there exists b3 an element of the basis such that x is an element of b3 a subset of b1 intersect b2 these were the requirements that we had okay and then we make another definition which is that we say u is open it's open if okay what's the requirement we have it right there for every x an element of u there exists b an element of the basis such that x is an element of b a subset of u okay that's specifically it now a theorem is that uh, uh this is a topology this is a topology okay so what we have to check is that firstly is that x is an element of it well that's just the first condition Okay, is the empty set an element of it? Obviously, because there's no elements in the empty set, so there's no way you could find me an example that doesn't apply. Okay. Secondly, okay, what's the second condition? Closed under arbitrary unions, okay? So what we do is we say, if x is an element of a union, then we have it that x is an element of a specific element, which implies that there exists b such that a uh, b an element of the basis by definition of openness such that x is an element of b is a subset of u alpha not is a subset of the union of all the u alphas is it's right there third condition is that again it's closed under finite intersections or just two intersections really so um we say that if x is an element of an intersection u intersect v then uh uh there exists b1 and b2 an element of the basis such that x is an element of b1 is a subset of u and x is an element of b2 is a subset of v which means that x is an element of their intersection right by definition of the intersection which is a subset of the intersection of u and v because uh b1 is a subset of u v2 is a subset of v their intersection is a subset of the intersection okay Oh, but by this condition, by 2, we have it that there exists B3 such that X is an element of B3, a subset of B1 intersect B2, a subset of U intersect V, and we have it. QED. Usually write a little box. Okay, so, just in case you didn't get that. Okay, cool. So, we I have one more thing to uh, prove to you, and it's that this is really just arbitrary unions of elements of the basis. Okay, so uh, is that. The theorem, more specifically, is that a theorem, 
that's an even worse marker. Is a uh, see theorem that says that U is open if and only if. Okay, so U is open if and only if U is equal to an arbitrary union of the basis elements. Okay, so I'm going to just assume that if it has a B, it's an element of the basis. Okay, so a proof of this. Okay, so we have to prove that if U is open, then U is an arbitrary union. Well, I can obviously prove that. Um, if X is an element of U, uh, then there exists B such that X is an element of B, a subset of U. Okay, so we have this. So that U is a subset, I'll call it BX, okay? There exists BX, okay? So U is a subset for all X and U of BX, okay? Because for every X an element of U, there X is an element of BX, and therefore an element of the union. Okay, so it's a subset, and then the other direction is because each bx is a subset of u, okay? Because each bx is a subset of u, this, inter this union is going to be a subset of u, so that the other direction also applies. And the only way that u is a subset of this and this is a subset of u is if they're equal. Okay, that's pretty easy. And then the second condition, how do we prove it? That if it's a union of basis elements, that it's a uh, that uh, it's open. Okay, that's pretty easy. Um, the union of B alpha for alpha in J is open because each basis element, each B alpha is open. Right? Because why are they open? Because x is an element of B alpha, a subset of B alpha for every x in B alpha. Okay. It's as simple as that. And that's it. So really, you could view it in the way that uh, the original definition was. But uh, another way you could view it is just arbitrary union of basis elements. And that's it.